I had an interesting conversation this week with a social media consultant who had a client with a problem. The client had received a negative review and the CEO had reacted angrily to it, causing the incident to escalate into a war of words and threats. Regardless of the facts of this incident, and I'm not saying for a moment that the CEO was not justified in feeling angry, the point is that the crisis was not the original negative review, it was a response to it that caused the escalation and is now having a significant negative impact on the business. Unfortunately, this is all too common. It's an example of a leader getting caught up in reacting and focused on ego rather than stepping back and thinking more broadly about the impact on the business. Hi, I'm Steve Hather from Crisis Clarity, and I know that after 30 years in the crisis management world, when an incident happens, it's conflict and confusion that can quickly lead to a crisis, and we help you build the processes and capabilities of your people to make sure that doesn't happen. With coronavirus having such an Im a significant impact on the way companies are operating and how people are feeling, having an effective crisis management team and leaders that are constantly engaging with staff, suppliers, customers and consumers as change happens all around us has never been more important. This month I had planned a series of posts on attributes of effective crisis management teams and leaders and had the fortune to interview Dr. Gerald Knight, the Chief Risk Officer of Coca-Cola Hellenic Bottling Company, who has just finished his PhD study on effective crisis management teams. I'll be presenting clips of that interview during the next few weeks. But I thought I would start with a key capability of crisis leaders, in fact, business leaders full stop, and that is emotional intelligence. In his best-selling book, Working with Emotional Intelligence, Daniel Goleman identifies five key competencies of emotional intelligence that are so relevant for leaders in a crisis. One, self-awareness, an understanding of self and awareness of our own emotions and how they are impacting ourselves and others. I've often seen even very senior CEOs feel they need to take on the burden of a crisis alone and disappear into their bunker rather than actively seeking other viewpoints. Two, self-regulation. Not just identifying and understanding our own emotions, but also letting emotions such as anger and frustration get in the way of what needs to be done. In the example I shared before, the initial re reaction was one of anger. That's natural. The mistake was to react accordingly rather than taking a step back to think it through. Three, motivation. This relates to deep-seated goals. In these uncertain times, it's easy to get caught up in the negatives, but thinking about and planning for where you want your business to be when things turn around and start positioning your business now to build those relationships with staff, customers, and consumers. Four, empathy. I've spoken a lot about this one, but it's about recognizing and acknowledging how others are feeling. Your staff are seeing the same headlines as everyone else. They will be feeling a similar sense of fear and anxiety. Acknowledging and empathizing in your communications and actions will help you engage more effectively. Number five, social skills, or how you interact with others. How you settle disputes and reconcile different perspectives and opinions. Understanding team dynamics is such a critical part of effective crisis management teams. People will react differently in a crisis. Your senior managers will have valid but sometimes conflicting perspectives. The key is to bring those perspectives together in a strategy that everyone can rally around. Crisis management is not just about resolving the technical problem that started the incident. If it was that easy, companies wouldn't keep getting into crises. I just heard a great quote from the guru of competitive intelligence, Ben Gallard, when he said that the essence of competitive intelligence is to understand the perspectives of those that are not you. That's just as applicable to crisis management. The key is to remember that it is your response to the incident that will more often cause a crisis. So take the time to work with your team to develop a credible strategy that provides clarity around the way forward and not just resolve the problem, but leave the business in an even better position. I've just run a fully online crisis simulation to help a client test their coronavirus response strategy with a heavy focus on how internal and external stakeholders may respond rather than just their internal processes. If you'd like to get an accurate stress test of your strategy, connect with me, send me a direct message or email me at steve at So thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon.